150 meters below the surface of the sea, the water is cold and in perpetual darkness. Less is known about the floor of the world's oceans than the surface of the moon. It is only in the past few decades that scientists have been able to explore this deep underwater world using remote operated vehicles, or ROVs, and revolutionary manned submersible craft, such as the Jago. For the first time, it's enabled scientists to see, with their own eyes, what lies in these murky depths. One of their most startling discoveries has been the abundance of coral reefs, living hundreds of meters below the surface of the sea at around four to 13 degrees centigrade. What's more, many of these reefs seem to play a significant role in the health of sea life in the area and harbor an incredible diversity of life. Water corals have been known to scientists since the 18th century, but their abundance in the deeper waters of all the oceans was startling. The Rost Reef, the largest cold water coral reef so far known, is 40 kilometers long. That's twice the size of Manhattan and was only discovered in the year 2000. It forms part of a chain stretching from the tip of Norway across Europe to the coast of West Africa. Cold corals are very slow growing. Individuals can be up to 1,800 years old. Many reefs began forming at the end of the last ice age. Yet just as scientists are beginning to map these corals and discover their significance to the marine world, so they are also charting their destruction. The most visible evidence points to the fishing industry and the widespread practice of bottom trawling with dragnets. We uh, very soon documented the damages, and it is especially on the trawling grounds. You know, the, the bottom trawls, it's heavy gear, and the reefs and or, or the, the coral colonies are very fragile. They're easily, easily damaged. So it was quite obvious that this was a, an activity that couldn't go on. The research vessel GO SARS is a survey ship belonging to the Norwegian Institute of Marine Research. The institute advises their government on all matters relating to the marine environment. Today they are leaving Tromsø to undertake a survey for cold corals off the northern coast of Norway, deep inside the Arctic Circle. Fishermen have reported reefs in the area. If the reefs do exist, they will be north of any previously known coral grounds. The search is on. Jan Helga Fosser is leading the expedition. And first of all, I'll just show you what kind of area we are going to. You know, Tromsø is down here. We will come up like this, past the, cross the Lopphave, and we go straight up to this area north of Søreja. We have information that there are coral reefs in this area and also down here. This framed part is a conflict area. We have much reports from fishermen that uh, we have a lot of coral fields, but also damages because of fishing. Searching for reefs in an entire ocean is like looking for a needle in a haystack so the local knowledge of the fishermen is vital. But given the amount of bottom trawling in the area and the coral's fragility, will the crew find their new reef or its smashed remains? Bottom trawling involves scouring the seabed with huge nets 60 meters wide, held apart by these metal boards, each weighing up to five tons. Under the sea, heavy ground rollers keep the net on the bottom. Like a plow, the trawl boards dig a furrow through the sea floor. Trawling in deep waters is the most destructive. Many organisms living here are slow to grow and slow to reproduce. The orange roughy, seen on many a dinner plate, 
can live for over 200 years. Cold water corals are found throughout the world, even in tropical waters and the high seas. These pictures show deep water corals from Hawaii, Alaska, New Zealand, and even the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Many countries are still unaware of reefs in their waters, as only the developed countries have the resources to map them. Off the coast of Miami, the Oculina cold coral reefs have been studied since the 1970s, using the revolutionary Johnson Sea Link submersible. One of these reefs was the Canaveral. My first time that I saw the reef, it was, it was incredible because you're on a flat, sandy bottom and it's kind of eerie. I mean, you have some light, but it's kind of twilight, kind of eerie blue. And then you just saw this big white structure looming off the bottom about 30 meters tall, covered with uh, these breeding aggregations of, of scamp and gag grouper. So it was an awesome time to see that, you know, to know you're the first person ever to, to see that. When we first started lockout diving, these fish were right in your face. I had a table on the bottom to do a growth study of the coral, measuring the coral with the pair of calipers. And this big 100-pound grouper would come up and grab the calipers out of my hand. And he's sitting there with his ruler sticking out of his mouth. And I grabbed it back, and we kept going back and forth. And I had to push him out of the way. It was like a big Labrador retriever. And it's like the Garden of Eden. Once we stop hunting them and they lose the fear of us, they're just, they're just all around you and it's wonderful. In 1984, 238 square kilometers of the southern reef area was closed to bottom fishing, but the northern area was left open. John Reed was last able to dive on this section in 1985. In 2001, he returned. So in 2001, I went back to the Canaveral Reef expecting this thriving, beautiful reef, and it was devastating. It looked like a steamroller had gone through. You still had this 20-meter tall mound, but every piece of coral was broken into pieces the size of your finger. There was nothing standing. It was just crushed. There were no fish. I, I mean, I was heartbroken to know that we did that, humans did that, just for a plate full of shrimp. It was ridiculous. And they did it legally. You know, we're allowing that in this day and age to people to trawl living reefs. Why? It's stupid. 